All right. Hello, everybody. So excited that you're able to hop on today as part of our uh, project that we are now launching, which is giving people insights into the lives of self-declared digital nomads. Um, what that is, who we are, why we're doing it, the values, and oh my gosh, we just had this brainstorm last week. We went into a digital nomad Facebook group that we've been a part of now for a while because there's so much to learn and there's so many things to be able to learn from our peers who are already doing this, right? And I put in a little message that basically said, looking for fun digital nomads to be able to interview. And lo and behold, one of the first people that hopped on was Laszlo, who you're gonna meet in a second. And yes, he is fun. Yes, he is um, just really a visionary with what he wants to achieve. He has amazing story, uh, both from what he has done already to set himself up for this life of, of freedom, um, as well as what he's looking to accomplish. So to kick off, I just want to give you context because so many people have been asking me, what is a digital nomad? Well, it's a pretty broad spectrum um, term, but it definitely encompasses the concept of being untethered, right? Mm, yes. Unt yeah. Detached, untethered, <clears throat> being able to step into a life of self-declared authenticity, <clears throat> freedom, travel, having priorities around all of those things versus priorities around the typical kind of, you know, standard lifestyle that is get the house, have the kids, have the dog, have the picket fence. For a digital nomad, many times that's just not a season that fits into their world. And so they're considered a little bit out of the box. Um, and Jeff and I stepped into that value system, as many of you know, um, a couple of years ago and have really, um, um, begun the process of looking at where we're going to travel to next. But right now, how many countries are we allowed to travel to? As of yesterday, looking at the far off path, I think it's called far off path. Uh, there's around 50 countries that we can go to as with a U.S. passport, as opposed to pre-COVID uh, times, there was around 140, mm -hmm. 50. So it's limited, but there's still lots of opportunity out there to move around. Yeah. And so um, the one way that we can move around is virtually getting to meet mm -hmm. new people, hear their stories. That's part of the joy of being able to travel is culture, food and people. So we're able to at least tap into the people. And I want to introduce you to Laszlo. Laszlo uh, is, is um, living in the UK right now, but he has uh, already set himself up. And I can't wait for you to hear his story for him and his partner to be able to navigate into his dream life. Um, and he's also just a really great guy. So um, Laszlo, if, if you don't mind taking a moment to just um, be able to you know, tell us a little bit about who you are and um, then we can hop into your goals and what you're, you're looking to accomplish. Yes, uh, thank you very much first of all for inviting me for this chat. It is a great story what you already said about yourself and just as you, I am also trying to find a little bit of an alternative way to live our life mm, uh, or my life. Um, it never really occurred to me to stay where I was born and where, where, where my, my, my family stayed. I was always a little bit adventurous when I choose my career and my, choose the location where I lived. So that's why I lived in, in the Middle East. I, I came to the UK, I lived in Germany, I studied in Portugal. So I was always sort of curious what is out there uh, for me and how can you prove that I, I, am, I am capable to, to fit in. I, 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 am, I am still fresh and, and curious for the new stories what I can catch on, on all, all, all these troubles. So uh, it was a very uh, early stage in my career. I, I, I sort of uh, set myself in a path where I don't want to be belong from a company or from like a corporation uh, when it comes to, my, to, uh, to finance my life. So I was very con uh, consciously uh, saved and, and position myself uh, in, 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 in this world 
where I can reach to a point and thanks God it's, it's, it came early because I'm only 40 <laughs> but I reached to a point where I can say like okay I can work for a company but if I don't need to work for a company if I don't enjoy or, or disagree with the values there I can I can do something else. <laughs> nice and That's what in what country are you from do you mind telling everybody like your country of origin because not only do you not belong to a company you don't actually yeah. belong to a country, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, I, I, I am Hungarian. I am Hungarian and my parents live in Hungary. Uh, uh, and I was born in Romania, so I, I was like a minority, like Hungarians, I'm a minority group in, in, in Romania, in Transylvania. Then, of course, my parents sort of uh, moved to Hungary when we were 10. Uh, my brother was three years old. And I think uh, one of the reason I am easy to to uh, to sort of adapt and and not to you know be like grounded for a long time because my parents had had this sort of mentality. They they were not afraid of change. They were not afraid of new challenges. So both of us work like this. And my brother, for example, he lives in Germany now. He he. When he was a kid, his dream was to work for a big uh, 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 car company to design car, and this is what he's doing. So I think both of us received a sort of push from home, like a message that don't be afraid. Uh, you don't, you know, the new is exciting. The new is 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 nothing to worry about, basically. Nice. Right. Yeah, and so. <laughs> One day you decide yeah. to travel to Sicily. Yes, because, yeah. So, so the the journey to get here is not always easy. So I fall into the trap as well. I fall into a circle to to work and work and work and and aim for more and try to work more and trying to make more money, try to be more successful. And I was also like hungry for the power, but as for everybody, or not everybody, but for many of the people, it can result with a sort of burnout. That we, I reached to a point when I was waiting a little bit like, okay, let's just slow down, wait for a second, where are we going with this? And I decided to take some time off, thankfully I could afford it, and I traveled on the Mediterranean, I went sailing, and I ended up by chance in, in Sicily. And when I arrived uh, uh, to Catania, that was a, such an exciting, untouched world uh, for me. It's even if it is Europe, but there is a combined culture with a little bit of Asia, a little bit of Africa, Middle East, you know, North Africa, Middle East influence. That was absolutely fascinating. And I find this project where, where I'm joining now, uh, which is uh, uh, called Casa Daria, and uh, sorry, somebody's calling me. Hello. Oops, no, no, can't talk right now. <laughs> so, and and uh, so I found this uh, this uh, this house, which is Casa Daria, the name of Casa Daria. It's a it's a nice townhouse in the in the central uh, part of Catania. And I met this uh, the local architect who was dreaming about the project. She, basically, she has no children, but uh, this is her the project she was deciding to take it on. on. And the dream was to sort of create a, a cultural hub, uh, a, a, a little bit of uh, 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 a safe place for artists where everybody is included, everybody is welcome, and 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 people can stop by as the digital nomads or any sort of nomads. I don't know, not necessarily digital, but nomads or travelers or people just curious to stop by, have us have some time and and look around absorb the culture, absorb whatever they can, and meanwhile enjoy the local food, the wine and the sunshine. So mm. it was very, very uh, exciting for me to, to participate, but it wasn't the right time. I still had to, you know, uh, uh, meet my financial goals and uh, had to, you know, make sure that while I'm doing it, I'm not completely 
destroying what I already built up, you know, I'm not spending the money. So thanks God I was lucky with my investments and I invested in my, all my salary in properties and now I'm here 40 and mortgage free, hopefully my retirement <laughs> so and, and hopefully I can use this sort of freedom to do something that I'm really, really passionate about. Mm. Mm, that is amazing. So you, you basically lived a meager lifestyle on your salary. I, I, you, you said to me, you said, you know, I never went to Starbucks, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't about like you going and joining the Starbucks right now. You had a goal yeah. to have properties that were mortgage free to be able to create a passive income for yourself to unlock your geographic freedom. So you can exactly. go work the project, right? And and how old were you when you went to Sicily the first time? And you're like, ping, this is what I was 36, I think it was four years ago. So I had to wait four years. I'm quite impatient, but I had to wait four years, but the time is come. So back back to the, the process, I think I was lucky because I sort of realized very early in, in my career uh, when I started my career that if it even if I can buy something, that doesn't mean I can afford it. Mm -hmm. So I was always against this like spending culture and and for and and and, and sort of like try to be very realistic, not to live from salary to salary. And even if I would have a certain uh, amount I could spend, I don't doesn't mean that I necessarily need to spend that. So I did sort of sacrifice on, on living. I, I never thought I can afford living alone uh, or rent an apartment alone because the property prices are just so crazy. If you are spending half of your salary on rent, that's, uh, that, that's not going to take you very far. So I, I always try to do a sharing. I never mind sharing uh, uh, accommodation. I never my, my uh, I I never uh, had a car. Never owned a car in my life. So um, I was always cycling. I as I, as I, as, I, as you mentioned, I ne I was never tricked by Starbucks coffee, and <laughs> and I never thought that that walking with a paper cup will be added, adding any value to my life. So I was very careful about what I did. I did not compromise on traveling because I thought that traveling will always give something to my life. There is always a story that you always meet with somebody or there is a new culture or the other way people do things or people value things or deal with things. I thought that is always going to add value to my life. So for that reason, to be able to, to do that, and, and, and still we have so much to learn. I'm, I'm sure you agree. There is so much to, to, to hear, to, to, to learn about, and to see that I think uh, the sacrifice I made is really worth it at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and really, I mean, you use the word sacrifice, but it's only sacrifice in the context of conventional living. It's, Absolutely. I, I actually feel like it's a sacrifice to have to try to keep up with the Joneses in order to like lose sight of what I really want to do in this world, right? Yes. So I guess it's it's really sacrifice in the eye of the beholder, right? Yes, ab absolutely, a hundred percent. I agree. My favorite thing is <laughs> one of my favorite thing in life is the Excel sheet. So I always sort of predict my income and predict like how much money I have and. And and you know if you if you if you earn an amount and you you spend it like the same amount that's that's something wrong. There is there is something wrong because the message is to me that I will have to work in order to live, and 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 and, and then in that case you need like I felt like I needed to change something so. Whenever it came to that point, I had to perhaps move to a cheaper accommodation or or go out a little bit less or or try to find way when you can travel for less you know and 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 it somehow by doing this uh, <coughs> exercise, I could uh, uh, 
see basically where I'm where we'll be in the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Is it is it worth it for me to wake up every morning to go to work and like mm -hmm. do well and 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 or is it just going to be like a vegetative <laughs> lifestyle, you know? Yeah, well I've always said like Jeff is a painter, like he's he's an artist. Mm -hmm. And I've always said that an artist has a blank canvas and they can put on it whatever they want to in order to create a beautiful masterpiece. I hmm. feel that way about calendars and Excel spreadsheets. Mm. I yeah, like yeah, absolutely, <laughs> yes. Because uh, frankly speaking, I don't really have any other artistic talent, so I have to be a little bit clever. <laughs> so, so let's go back to Catania and this gorgeous building. Yeah that you fell in yeah. love with. Can you tell us a little bit about the building and the history um, of, of this project? This architect has this vision and you step in, you meet her, you say, yes. well, in four years time, I'm gonna come back and we're gonna do this project. Like both of you. Yes, yes because, because Daria is a, a, an architect and I saw the profile of the building because she's doing also short-term rentals, like, like a holiday land. And, and, and when I stepped into the building, I instantly felt like an opportunity here because I felt the pictures are not uh, making justice to the building. Like for some reason, the photographer and how the building was presented didn't capture that amazing ambience that this building has itself. And also Daria, she, she, she is a local architect and she's so fresh and, and curious for the, for the world. She has so much, so much ambition and so well ahead of her uh, age, I think, uh, or our age, I think. Um, but she, is, she doesn't understand how the hospitality works in a way like she, 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 she is an amazing designer. She's an amazing architect, architect, but to make it work and make it profitable, to have to create something rather than just a bed and a comfortable living or holiday. Like I, I think we need a little bit more. And then it comes my vision, obviously, like I would like to include everybody. I, I, I would like uh, travelers to meet. I would like uh, to, uh, people to share stories. I'm a little bit, let's say, uh, um, <laughs> maybe selfish in, in that department because one of the greatest thing is to hear somebody else's story. And if it is a success, get inspired, if it is, not so successful, like learn the lesson, obviously. So the building is very, very, very fascinating. The building uh, is in the uh, uh, middle, middle of San Barillo in a very central location. And the San Barillo was the, one of the biggest uh, 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 zone where prostitutes would uh, uh, basically work. And the, the, the building was well, meant to be a hotel for the Teatro Massimo, which is just uh, five minutes away. It's the great theater in, in, in Sicily. And the, the building was used as a hotel for the artists, for the, for the actors and for the staff, you know. So whenever there was a big uh, 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 visit from, from another theater, that there was a stage, like a new, a, a new show, they would be staying there. Mm -hmm. And then obviously because of the age, because of the area, it became a brothel. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and for some reason, uh, for, for some time, it was actually working as a brother. And I, when I heard it, I thought that this is what, what, a, what a trick on life, right? If we could turn this, which is a very negative thing, you know, it's like a very, very negative thing, into a fantastic, a positive thing, and use the building, you know, uh, for, for, for artists again, and use the building for the locals to come in sometimes, and, and tourists and travelers, and, and sort of uh, turn this again back to the old glory. That would be just amazing. And um, hopefully uh, we will be starting. I mean, we have already nine apartments which are uh, operational. And with all our efforts, whatever we can, we will be 
uh, starting the works early next year, as soon as we can travel again. And uh, we also uh, opened the GoFound uh, page uh, as well, which I did today. <laughs> uh, but uh, because obviously this will be quite a lot of money to renovate the building. Uh, all of us are basically uh, working or have this passive income and we are like putting our own, own money into this dream but we will be needing some some people whoever are thinking the same way whoever like our project or whoever would like to visit us yeah, at some point or or, or or join us in the journey either virtually or in life uh, we are very open to that so it would be a great great help for from everybody I think it's great that you're you're tapping into what's what I see as a, a lot of people see as a global trend of, you know, uh, space sharing, uh, the sharing economy, and in particular the you know the co-working and co-living uh, space. And so we're curious, you know, I think you've talked a little bit about it, but what do you think is going to make uh, your space at Catania special, stand out, uh, you know? Yes. So whenever whenever I traveled, basically I I I lived in many locations and I know all the hustle, which is like finding your space. Then you buy your kitchen utensils because you love cooking, or you can't afford restaurants either, or and and you you buy furniture, but you do you know this is only temporary, so you can't go for the expense. If you have to go second hand, then you start to you know. Uh, like things, then you know that the, the journey is, will have to continue at some point. So you either have to decide to ship everything over or sell it. Or it's just a hell of a lot of hustle. And our project is basically uh, supporting the nomads so, uh, because we are providing everything. So there is a Berlin and there is a tower and everybody can arrive with, with basically a hand luggage and, and, and everything is set for them to, to start a life. Don't worry about the, you know, uh, troubles in, in terms of like, you know, these practical things because we take care of it. And we also decided in, in our pricing to have different uh, entries. So we, we will have a dormitory uh, uh, with six beds, I think, for sharing. That's going to be around 250 euro per month, which is basically even for a student accommodation is quite, quite good. We have studios, four studios with like and sweet the smoke kitchen at for, uh, if somebody likes to enjoy a little bit of privacy. And we have three penthouses as well with like rooftop terrace. So the reason we are like doing the pricing like, uh, like this, because we would like to, to have people talking regardless how much, uh, how much money they make. I, I truly believe that like people who, success, who are successful already, can be such as useful to, to somebody who is just starting that career than the other way around. We, we, when we sit down at the table at Casa Daria, everybody is equal. And I think we need to give opportunities for, for people with different background, different budgets, and to, to enjoy this experience. Mm, and you yeah, talked about good. like language sharing and cultural sharing and hook, like yes yes i mean and... absolutely i mean for us it's very important that we will be open for the local people i mean this i don't know if you know about the couch surfing when i started to travel and with a very small budget i really enjoyed couch surfing and because you meet the locals and you go to the nice places where they go and they tell you like a lot of the story, but let's say a, um, a planet, whatever it, it wouldn't, wouldn't uh, or TripAdvisor wouldn't mention. So for that reason, and not just for that reason, because the, one of the reasons is because I am curious, we are curious for the local artists, the local people who, who stayed uh, in Catania. And I want, my experience is they are very curious about us. They are very curious about the travelers and the, 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 the people on holiday or people on business that 
so it, we would like to sort of uh, provide a space where we can all sit together, all discuss different ideas of life and living. Maybe we will inspire somebody by our nomadic lifestyle. Maybe the, we will get inspired by somebody who is who never lived, left uh, Sicily, you know? So you never mm -hmm. know, it's exciting. Yeah, well, one thing you're going to So I am curious uh, how people will join this project, you know, as, mm -hmm. you know, support it, follow yeah. them, how, how they'll find the place and, and book, book a space for themselves. Yeah, so, so we have a website, which is Casa Daria Catania. Uh, there is, uh, that's for the short term, we are working on the website now, so we will be opening for like a long term stay as well. And as soon as I'm there, we will be starting a YouTube channel, so we will be uh, documenting whatever we did, how we did, we did it. Uh, I'm not super experienced in building first, so they will be seeing our mistakes most of <laughs> probably, or what, what we did. We would like people to join in and suggest and correct and or just give us an opinion. Maybe there are things what we didn't think of and it would be useful. We would like people to come and stay with us even for a week. Or, 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 or so, so, so we would like to do a lot, of, a lot of things, including cooking classes or, or, or the journeys. We have amazing property portfolio. We have a beach house as well, actually, uh, which needs renovation, but that's <laughs> that's not a problem. Uh, but we have a beach house as well, so that that is one venue we would like to sort of uh, fe feature in in the in the movies or the. Uh, movies had uh, the films uh, what we are producing so we, we are planning to say hello to to our audience like once a week uh, to start with and then keep everything running and take it from there oh that's awesome and and you know with uh, i was just speaking to another person who does professional um house um sitting and she oh yeah yeah she exposed me to a website. The name is forget. I'm slipping the name right now, but I will certainly email it to you and I'll put it in the comments below, which is a work share website where you are able to live someplace in exchange for a certain number of hours of work, right? So yes. like, I would love to come there, live in the dormitory for a yes. month, like, like clean and paint and do all the things. That would be so much fun. That's how I started my property management career, frankly speaking. So, the, so I am in property management, and the way and uh, the way I started it, I was started started. I was a gardener for a very beautiful estate here in the UK, uh, and basically I received a very very basic like a pocket money sort of thing. But they provided us uh, provided me with a uh, with a car. With accommodation, I lived in an amazing place for one and a half years. I also practiced my English, you know, all these things. So, and from there, I went for the property management, and and I I, I sort of like improved on the on the thing. It's an amazing experience. I highly recommend it. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, so stay tuned for. Uh, Laszlo's YouTube channel. We'll keep everybody informed in the description down below. If you're watching this on YouTube, if it's Facebook, well, you may or may not have, have seen it, um, but certainly go to Go Where It Feels Good YouTube channel if you're watching this on Facebook and make sure you subscribe so that you can watch all the interviews that are coming down the pike. Uh, Laszlo, I want to thank you again for taking the time for sharing your story and I You've enticed me to come to Sicily. Yeah, we'll I'm, ready, I'm ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> you are very welcome, and thank you very much for for the time again and for your stories. I will be watching your YouTube and wishing you very, very uh, so much luck and so much fun on your journey. Thank you. Thank you so much. So I'm gonna take care. Bye. Yeah.